All right, guys, welcome in to our next Manly Friday uh, with the life skills that you guys are going to need uh, to hopefully better yourself as a man and kind of skills you'll use going forward for the rest of your life. Um, today, we're going to go over how to cook a steak. Okay, so with me today, I've got Mr. Rory Martin, and I'm going to let him explain why he's the best guy for the job to teach you this life skill. Hey everybody, uh, welcome to the segment. Uh, I am Chef Rory and I'm here to help you guys learn how to cook steak a little better than you already can. Uh, I've been working in restaurants 16, 17 years my whole life and uh, I've been working in the dishwasher, line cook, was a sous chef, uh, executive chef, now I am the regional chef for Firebirds Wood Fire Grill. Um, I'm excited to be here today to teach you how to cook. Cool, let's get it started and we're going to start right now just to look, look for in the meat. So we'll get back to it in a second. All right, so you guys got your date night planned with the lucky little lady, you may be cooking for relatives, maybe mom or dad helping them in the kitchen and, and setting some people down for the, the food. So the first step we gotta do is we gotta head to the store, whichever one's closest to you, um, and we gotta find the right piece of meat. So Roy, what's the right piece of meat? Well, here we go. So today, uh, Coach brought me over these excellent ribeyes. I believe he went to Costco, uh, one of my favorite places in Tucson to get beef. Um, but, you know, you can go to a Safeway, you can go to AJ's, that's great stuff. Whole Foods has some really nice stuff. Uh, just probably don't go to the dollar store or somewhere like that looking for a steak, right? Uh, so these are ribeyes. and look at those one more time just to get a good look. Now, you see all that, you might say fat right away, but look at all that marbleization. You want to see those thin kind of spider webs of fat. That's going to give you a lot of flavor, a lot of moisture. And with a steak like this, you could cook a ribeye medium, mid well, well done. More cooked isn't necessarily a bad thing because all that fat's going to still give it a little bit of juiciness, still give, give it some good flavor. Uh, let's say you're not into fat. You want to get maybe a filet or something, right? The filet is the, the filet mignon. That is the crown jewel of the cow, right? That's a leaner steak, and you cook that probably a little less because it has less of that fat on it. It will dry out if you cook it too much. Uh, but that's a great steak if you're not into the fat. But today we got these excellent ribeyes, and uh, we're going to show you how to season them up here in a bit and make some delicious stuff. Cool. So you're talking about this type of steak. If I want more of a, a rare edge steak, I'm looking for less of the fat, less of the, the white portion, we'll say of the steak if I'm just looking at it. Exactly. I would say if you're going to do something more on the rare, mid-rare side, you don't want all this sinew and uh, things running through your steaks. You want something a little more lean. And the more fattier steak, you can cook a little, a little longer and it will still taste delicious. Cool. So we got our pieces of meat. We're ready to season them up. Um, let's look for the proper way to season a steak before we throw it on the grill. All right. So you just picked out your perfect piece of meat. Um, you're bringing it home, don't just open up the package, throw it on the grill and think you're going to be ready to go. Uh, the steak needs some love. Okay, so we're going to talk about seasoning right here. So, Roy, what is seasoning? Why is it important? What do I want to put in my seasoning? What's a seasoned steak look like? Okay, so I'd say one of the biggest crimes you could commit is under seasoning your steak. I mean, then all your flavors out the window and it just tastes like plain, bland beef. So seasoning is really important. I'm doing a little blend today. I got some uh, kosher salt, heavy on the black pepper, a little chili powder, a little garlic salt. But really, you could just do a lot of salt and pepper. You could do, if you have some sort of all-purpose favorite steak blend, that's fine too. Uh, but the main thing is seasoning it correctly. So I'm going to show you this here. Uh, while he was talking, I was kind of getting this going. And notice how we got this thing seasoned all sides, pretty thick too. Now, you, at first, you might look at that and say, wow, that looks like it's going to be a salty steak, right? But you got to think that inside of that steak, none of that has any sort of seasoning. So you kind of want to build that salt crust, and as it caramelizes and cooks on the flat top or whatever you're cooking on, it all kind of melts together. The salt, the juices from the beef, all kind of makes this really nice crust. So you got to think that it might look a little heavy, but it's going to come out perfect. Cool. So I'm noticing the concoction that you've made for your seasoning. Uh, a lot of people are just going to go straight to the salt and pepper. What's kind of my ratio? For salt to pepper, we're going half and half. What are we looking to do? Usually it's about a two to one. Salt to pepper is going to get you in a good spot, um, unless you really love pepper too. I know a lot of like Texas barbecue, stuff like that, they do the opposite ratio. They'll do double the pepper and half as much salt. So really, again, it comes down to your preference, but I think that you want to, don't, don't skimp on the salt. You know, you don't want to have an under seasoned steak. Cool. So most people are going to do that salt and pepper. Any uh, secret ingredients if I want to spice up my, uh, I mean, my zest a little bit? Garlic salt is a winner, maybe some onion powder, um, the chili powders, those are great. Uh, you know, any sort of secret weapon or thing you're going for, you can certainly throw it in there, it's not going to hurt it. Beautiful. So once I got that uh, seasoning all messed up, I want to make sure that whole steak is covered, all the sides, top, bottom, because we got to make sure that seasoning 
is available for every single bite. And one other thing I want to make a point about too is that these steaks have been sitting out on room temp for about 30 minutes now too. So that's important because it's going to allow you to get a more even cook on the steak. Because uh, you got to imagine if this thing's completely ice cold, the outer parts that are getting, they're touching the heat, those are going to cook faster than let's say the center of the steak. So if you want a more even cook, it is a great idea to leave your steak out at room temp for about a half hour. Good. And leave it out even before you season or anything like that? Absolutely. Perfect. Let's start to cook in here in a second. All right, so we got our steak looking beautiful now. It is all prepped. We got our seasoning on there with our salt, pepper, steak totally covered. Um, now that the meat's ready to go, we got to get our cooking method to go, whether you're on a flat top, which we'll be on, um, or just using the grill. So, Roy, what are we doing to prep our cooking method um, as far as heat-wise, um, preparation with oils, anything like that? You go ahead and how do we get the grill started? Also, a very pivotal point. So we got this thing seasoned. We got a good piece of of beef at the store and now we're under the importance of, of what we're going to cook it on and how hot and things like that. So very important to you, you don't have a cold grill. When you see those gray steaks that don't have any char or anything like that, that's because you're probably cooking on something too cold and moving around too much, right? So whatever you're cooking on, whether, yeah, we're using a flat top, but you can use a gas grill, uh, you could use a uh, charcoal grill, um, you could use a cast iron skillet, another great way to do it, but you want to get it nice and hot. That's the key thing. So whatever you're doing, get your coals going, get it turned on for a while, whatever you're doing, get it nice and hot. You want to get that nice caramelization and kind of get that like crispy sort of a delicious like outer edge of the steak and then the juiciness in the middle. Perfect. So we've got our flat top nice and hot. Um, do I need to put anything on the flat top before I throw the steaks down? I mean, this is a, you know, a more marbled steak. We really don't have to. I'm going to squirt a little bit of olive oil on here, but the steak's going to make enough of its own juices anyway. But we're going to squirt a little bit of olive oil. We're going to get those steaks going uh, and let that crust start building and start smelling delicious in this kitchen. Perfect. So we got, we're going to put a little olive oil on the flat top just to make sure nobody blows themselves up on a grill. Do I spray anything on a grill before I throw the steak down? I don't think you need to, but if you wanted to, uh, just a little bit, and uh, be careful you don't have big flames. That's the thing, too, is that you can have a hot grill, but not necessarily direct flames. You don't want to have a bunch of flames with a fatty steak like this, or you're going to char your steak completely black. Um, so, you know, to add a little more color to that statement, I don't want a gray-looking plain steak, but I also want something that's burnt to a crisp. So it's important, too, that whatever you do have, if you are going the charcoal method and you're starting to get those big flames, kind of wait till the coals die down. You have hot metal, but not necessarily right. So we've thrown those steaks on. They've been cooking on that flat top uh, for about four or five minutes now. So, Rory, when do I flip these things over? I know we've been talking about we want to get these to about a medium temperature. Uh, so what am I looking for before I flip my steak? Yeah, I mean, grill. obviously you can cook, uh, if you like it more rare, you like it more cooked, whatever you like. I'm aiming for a medium. That's where I like my ribeyes. Uh, so what I'm looking for now, you can kind of start to see, even if you look down the bottom edge, you can see how much it's starting to caramelize. And you can always take a little peek, kind of see, you guys see all that beautiful color? That's all that meat juice and salt and everything just making this nice crust. So they look like they're about ready to flip, you can tell. Also notice how I don't put these too close together. If they're completely on each other, it's going to just steam on each other. You need to have at least a little bit of space so you get that nice sear. Here we go. I think they're trying to flip though. Look at that nice crust we're talking about. There we go. See that caramelization? That's flavor right there, baby. And one, another thing I want to make clear is this is the first time I flipped them and probably the only time I'm going to flip them. You don't want to be moving your safe too much or you'll never, never build that nice crust. So all you're really looking for before you flip is that caramelization. Um, are you touching them with it? Just all look. Just kind of see where that temperature is coming from. Well, it's not perfect, but if you guys don't know this method, if you leave your hand completely relaxed and you kind of touch right here on your thumb, completely relaxed, that's kind of how a rare steak's going to feel. And if you kind of clutch these two right here with your pointer and not push hard, but just barely bring it together, that's kind of like a mid-rare. Go to the middle finger, pretty close to a medium, right here, mid-well, and all the way to the pinky, tightens up a lot more. That's kind of how a well-done steak's going to feel. So that's, that's kind of one way to do it, but yes, definitely you're going to want to touch a little bit. I like to touch the sides as well, because that crust will sometimes feel a little more cooked than it is. It's a little tougher. So kind of feel the sides, look at it, you kind of see how far it's coming along. And uh, yeah, we'll just kind of see how it goes here. Cool. So yeah, it took about five minutes before we flipped them. Obviously the size of the steak is going to matter quite a bit. But get that field test, take a look at it, make sure stuff's cooking and caramelizing you please. But don't touch the steaks as they cook. Flip them one time. One side, both sides, and you'll be ready to eat. We'll get back when these things are done cooking. Right, so we got our steaks just about to finish. Um, one thing we definitely got to mention, as we're cooking inside, we got the flat top going. You got a fan 
make sure you turn your fan on before you burn the house down or fill with smoke. Okay, if you're outside, you got the grill, you got the open air to clear the smoke, you're good to go. Um, but we've been just been sitting here, not touching them, letting them cook on themselves. Okay, we did our little field test. These things are about medium. We're ready to take them off. Okay, so after we take them off, are we ready to eat, Rory? Well, actually, before that, it's very important that we let the steak rest. Okay, now if you cook your steak, you can cook it perfectly, then you cut that thing open right away while it's still super hot, out goes all your juice, okay? And that's and then you'll see this big puddle of blood and juice on the pan. You don't want to do that. you got to wait for it to kind of come down to temperature so the blood kind of like re, uh, re-disperses within the meat, if that makes sense. Cool. So we're about to take these off. We'll let them sit for a while, and then we'll see how we did it. All right, so uh, now these have sat for a few minutes, it's time to go and see what we made here, right? So here's one thing too, if you were serving this on a plate, you got the fat cap in the rear right up here, you wouldn't want to sell that right to your person's belly, because they're gonna be cutting right into the, to the fat. This is the belly of the steak. So if you were putting this on a plate, or you got that as a presentation for your girlfriend or something, put that side facing the guest, makes sense? Okay, now here we go, let's cut into this a little bit and see what we got. We'll just start uh, slicing up and see what kind of beautiful looking steak we got. It looks juicy, you see all that there, Ryan? Awesome. Oh, Delicious. Some nice pink in there. Oh, wow. I think we nailed it, right? So you talked about we were looking for a medium. What does medium mean? So medium is going to be a pink center, okay? Mid-rare is going to be like a red, juicier looking center and a little bit cooler in temperature. Um, Mid-well will have a thin line of pink, and of course, well done is going to be no pink at all. Um, rare is going to be cold to your, to your mouth. That's actually going to be so cold, just sear on the outside. Uh, so yeah, for my ribeyes, I typically like them around mid-rare to medium. Uh, this thing came out right around there, and I'm really looking forward to getting into it. Cool. So obviously, you're an expert. Made it beautiful. If I need it cooked a little bit more, is it okay to throw it back on the grill? Yes. I mean, we're not perfect, and we don't have extra vision, right? Sometimes you're going to undercook it. If you overcook it, you're out of luck. But if you undercook it, it's not great. You don't want to aim to go throw it back on the grill or whatever, but of course you can. Better than, you know, trying to force yourself through some steak you don't actually enjoy. Perfect. Cool. We got some basics. Ready to eat, man. Yeah. We got basics to cook, man. Ours is looking good. Tell mom, dad, whoever it may be at home, you're going to cook for them. Try out your steak cooking abilities and make it happen. Let's go. Thanks for everybody's time today. I hope you learned how to cook a great steak. Beautiful.